A handful of months ago, I talked about doing a video or two on strategy guides that I owned. It's been about a handful of months at this point, and it is time to do a video on strategy guides that I have. I'm going to break this up into at least two videos, looking at the other guides that I have planned for the second video, it will probably, probably end up being two or three videos um, after this one. Uh, we'll see how far I get in uh, the next video. Uh, I'm going to focus right now on strategy guides for PC games as well as older games. And there's a couple miscellaneous quasi-strategy guides that I'm going to include in here um, just because I don't think they fit anywhere else. So with that said, let's start with the PC guides first. So the first guide I have for PC is Crusader No Remorse. Uh, this is a game that initially I discovered from a friend, Matt. Uh, he was a friend back in middle school, high school. He had this game. Um, unfortunately, my computer couldn't handle it for many, many years. So I wasn't actually able to play it outside of the little bit that I got to play it at his house. There's actually another game in the Crusader series. Uh, I don't have it. I think both might be on either good old games or Steam, not quite sure. This is an interesting guide. Um, it came bundled in a box with the actual game. Uh, I've still got the box and the game someplace, uh, but I pulled the guide out separately. Uh, it contains black and white photos of the characters um, that you'll see in the game. And then it also has some rendered weapons. Uh, quality is not very good, but at this point in time, this guy was 1995. Uh, it's pretty good. Uh, further down, you've got actual maps to each of the levels. These are in color versus the rest being in black and white. It's kind of interesting because it's got a version just with everything on it and then another version that's kind of if you want to get through the level fast here's what we recommend and then there's a couple points at step one you know make sure you do this make sure you do that it's uh I can actually show you some of the uh gameplay i don't know how well it'll show up in the video but basically you control the guy in red up here, you go through levels, and you basically shoot up uh, machines, uh, which are like walking automaton robots, um, as well as people, politicians, whoever gets in your way of uh, your mission. It's uh, definitely an interesting game. I'm glad I've got the guide. It took me a long time to find this. And I think I picked it up when I was up in Green Bay. So, good fun. Glad I have it. The second and last PC game guy that I have is For Mist. We actually had another one of these as well. Not quite sure where it went. Might still have it, in fact, um, with my other books. This also is supposed to come with a map, which we either have someplace or... I got rid of it, which I really hope I didn't get rid of it. Uh, but, yeah, right in the middle there. And it's all black and white. Probably ought to beat the game. This is one of those interesting games because when I initially got it, I think we got it from our aunt. And the computer that we had just couldn't handle the video. Uh, way too slow. Frame rate. Just horrible. Many, many years later, I was finally able to play it, had a lot of fun with it, um, and all that excitement. I think just me trying to find, just trying to watch the very beginning video with the man falling down into the chasm or the abyss, it just, it was just amazing, and I really wanted to get it running, and I finally did. I don't know that I actually ever did Everything that you're supposed to, I think I gave up at a certain point and just got the, uh, well, but looking at it, 
I guess I do remember going through some of these areas, so I don't know. Maybe I did. Uh, maybe I just got the book or the pages right from the beginning and and went that way. But uh, this is another old guide, but guy in that uh, gaming guide that I'm really glad I have. So that wraps it up for the PC games. Uh, the next, I'm going to talk about some older ones. So now that I've talked about the PC game guides that I have, I'm going to talk about the miscellaneous guides that I have, and then talk about some of the older guides that I have. And I'm going to kind of do the ones that I don't feel that strongly about first, and then I'll go into the ones that I am proud to have. So, with miscellaneous game guides first, we have the Nintendo Power Index, 3rd edition. Uh, this covers volumes 1 through 70 of Nintendo Power, plus some uh, player's guides. This is a very old guide. Uh, I'm guessing I got this for free for having the Nintendo Power subscription or something. It's got my old uh, Sun Prairie address from back when we were in middle school. Uh, maybe a little bit of high school, but I think this was just middle school. And uh, it basically has all of the games that had been released at that point, and then when they had been featured, previewed, um, CC, I'm not sure what that is, classified info maps, uh, and then if there was a trade paper guide, or trade paperback, strategy guides, blah -de blah blah for the games. Um, I have gone through way back when and kind of highlighted the games that I had and then which issues I had. Uh, and then up front, I had crossed or kind of highlighted with pencil the uh, issues that I had with Nintendo Power. I ended up uh, just basically recycling these after uh, college. Uh, we were living with a guy. He collected a bunch of video game stuff. He had some really old games. He had like both of the Lunar games all complete for the PlayStation. Uh, just big RPG guy. Fortunately, most of his games ended up getting stolen when he was between apartments, so that kind of sucked. But I think he either got them or they just wanted to recycle because I didn't care about Nintendo Power at that point. Um, I ended up getting rid of my Nintendo 64 around that time period, so part of me kind of regrets that, but, uh, you know, this is what I've got to remember those by, and that's probably enough for me. Otherwise, you collect all that stuff, and you just don't have room for it with everything else, so, yeah. Uh, another one I have from that time period is the Super Game Boy uh, strategy guide, if you will. This was a freebie, I think, and what this ended up doing for you is, and here's Super Metroid, or sorry, Metroid 2 Return of Samus. Um, it kind of gives you an idea of what the different colors look like um, if you wanted to use different codes or different color palettes. And yeah, it covers a bunch of uh, it colors covers a bunch of games and the different color palettes that you could use or that they recommend for you. Uh, I ended up picking up a Super Game Boy. I don't know months ago, within the last year. I haven't bought any old Game Boy games for it, but saw it for a low price, good condition. I figured I'd pick it up. You know, something that I wish I had gotten way back when, uh, just to play some of those old Zelda games and uh, Tetris and all that fun stuff, because they're in a game gear, which is kind of a bad decision, but it's what we live with. So, there we go. Going a little bit more current, these are guides that either I just don't have the games for, or I'm just not that excited about them for whatever reason. Uh, the first one is... Banjo Kazooie strategy guide, and we'll actually just go ahead and cover the second one too, which is the Banjo Tooie guide. This is another Sun Prairie address one, and this is another free one that I got just for I don't know Nintendo Power for some reason. Uh, we only had Banjo Kazooie, never got the second. I'm trying to remember if there's a third game or if it was just planned on being a third game. Uh, Again, got rid of my Nintendo 64, so I got rid of this. 
Uh, they're good to have, but I don't know. I figure I keep them around because they might be worth something at some point. Uh, another game, Donkey Kong 64. I think this was another free one that I got for some reason. Never had this game. Never played this game. I've seen a couple videos on YouTube about it, but I don't really have any interest in it. Again, just kind of keeping it around because I figure one day it might be worth something. And just, yeah. Um, and finally, the ones that are older that I don't like really care about so much. We have uh, Star Wars Episode One Racer. Yes. And uh, we also have Star Wars Rogue Squadron, which was a very fun game. This one not so much. Kind of got into that hype of oh, new Star Wars and. Thankfully, I outgrew that phase many, many, many years ago. Uh, but Rogue Squadron, that was a good one. It's got your whoops, uh, maps, some strategies on how to go through the levels. I think I ended up getting all of the unlockables because of this guy here. So, uh, glad I got this one. If anything, I'll probably keep that. Um, but otherwise, of the other ones, I would probably get rid of any at whatever notice. So, that's kind of the older guides that just not that into anymore. Not, you know, I can get rid of them when it really bother me. Uh, so with that out of the way, let's talk about the ones that I am glad that I have that are for older games. So first of all, Donkey Kong Country. Uh, this is for the original. It's got the front and behind of uh, Donkey Kong. And this is an older one. It's actually got a price tag for Walden Software for $12. Uh, this covers the first Super Nintendo game. It's got all the maps. Uh, all the bonus areas are covered. And I'm pretty sure we had this guide initially. Uh, and this is what allowed us to, well, probably me mostly, uh, get through the entire game. And uh, definitely came in handy. Never picked up the guide or the games for the second or third versions of Donkey Kong Country, but the first one I loved, especially the snow theme. Um, Derek Alexander has got the uh, Retro Beats podcast, and he featured that on one of it. And it just, it brings me back to the snow, you know, coming down a little bit. And then flurries as it comes down even more. Definitely a great guide. Very fun memories of this game. Uh, next up, we've got a guide by a company that I haven't seen a guide for since. Um, and that is Versus Books, The Legend of Zelda, or the, yeah. Ocarina of Time. Uh, full color also comes with two posters, both of which I still have. Uh, it's a little beat up because I definitely, definitely use this for the guy, for the game. Uh, again, earlier I mentioned that I got rid of my Nintendo 64. This was one of the games that I got rid of. Got it at Toys R Us when it first came out. I had the gold edition, you know, pre-ordered it. Had the nice shiny box and all that. Uh, but, eh, you know, sometimes I kind of miss it because I had everything for it. But on the other hand, I don't know that I... I, I mean, I didn't play my Nintendo 64 very much when I had it, so I'm glad I got rid of it. Got the money for something else because at the time I needed it. So, eh, you know. Uh, but I'll keep the guide, just for, for the memories. Next up, we have a binge of Mario stuff. Uh, we have Mario Mania, which covers Super Mario World. Had this way back in the day when we had Mario, Super Mario World, which we still do. Um, has all the maps, how to get through it. It's also got this interesting history of Mario. Um, this is just one of them where it kind of talks about the characters and how they've progressed over time, but there's a bunch of other sections about it. There is a uh, world map inside of here. 
And I think at the very end, it's got yeah, all the special worlds, gnarly, uh, tubular, which we beat, but mm, it's more like a friend came over, Sean, and uh, he did a lot of those levels. I don't know if going back now I could beat those levels or if I'd have difficulties, but who knows. Here's another one that came from Walden Software. It's got a 9.99 price tag on it, and it is the guide for Mario Paint. This is one I was actually looking at a little earlier, and uh, the reason I was doing that is because it's got it's it's actually a really really good game guide. Uh, so here's all the stamps with the characters you can make. Uh, there's Mega Man, etc. There's a couple on here, uh, like for Star Fox, the R Wing. You can see that I've actually, whoops, I've actually got a date on it of June 13th, 1994. So that is when I made that particular stamp collection or that that thing. Um, here's a baseball one, and then over on this side, it's got a picture of a field with the guy jumping over, uh, with the fans, and then what this side basically tells you is how to create a stamp that has that guy catching the ball falling into the stands, um, and then how to create the fans. But I was looking at this because near the end, there is a guide, like, it covers how to create videos, how to create music, how to create stamps. As as one place said, it's it's very very 90s. Um, so there's how to set up your television with your VCR, uh, <laughs> and yeah, uh, two VCRs. Imagine. Oh, and there's a boombox uh, right over there. So, anyways, there's a there's a bit about a video. Uh, the Steve, Stephen D. Miller, Steve Miller, and you try to find anything about it now, and you just, like, there's nothing on YouTube about this video. Uh, so the only, the only historical information about that video is probably Mario Paint and then other people, which it seemed like I wasn't the only one, forever or thinking about all oh, those videos that he made, you know, just Michael Jackson black and white and did a full video out of it. Where is it? It's probably gone. Because it was stuck on a VHS uh, tape but that's been destroyed. So anyways, it's it's interesting how these guys guys kinda of bring back the olden days for uh for some. Uh here's another another guide for Mario. This is the Super Mario All Stars uh player's guide. It's a little beat up on the back because again this is one that got quite a bit of use. We were lucky enough to get a copy of Super Mario All-Stars way back in the day. Uh, this basically covers, so this is the first game, Super Mario Brothers. How to beat it basically. Uh, it's all the maps. Uh, Lost Levels is in here, Super Mario Brothers 2 is in here, which if you look at it and I'm going to try to do it so you can see. Um, but basically, there's from the top yellow, blue, green, and red. Uh, and red is very tiny. Blue, which is Super Mario Brothers 2, is very tiny. Lost Levels is huge, and Super Mario Brothers 3 are huge as well. So it gives you a sense of the scope. Super Mario Brothers 2, I actually beat. Um, I'm not sure about the other three. I know I didn't beat Super Mario Lost Levels. And actually, I think I did beat... Uh, yep. So, according to this, I beat it March 9th, 1994. I bought... I finished Super Mario Brothers 3. Uh, for the longest time, I kind of cataloged when I did stuff. Uh, no note about Super Mario Brothers 2, but... I've also got this 534 PWS, W something. Um, so maybe 534 PM on March 9th, 1994, I beat it. Don't know. But uh, 
Super Mario Brothers All Stars Players Guide. Next up, we've got the Super Mario RPG Legend of the Seven Stars Players Guide. I think I got this as a promo or something else. Never owned Super Mario's RPG game, just ended up renting it quite a bit. Uh, I got pretty far in the game, and I think I might have beat it, but I don't exactly remember. I might have also just gotten to the very end, and then time ran out and had to give it back in. Because uh, I'm trying to remember how much it was to rent like two bucks or something for a couple nights and you could pay like five bucks and get it for um, more than that I don't know a week or something but uh, very colorful guide tells you how to get through everything it's got maps very nice guide but uh, yeah never owned the game I think I picked it up on virtual console uh, last Super Mario or last Mario Player's Guide is the Super Mario 64 Player's Guide. This again, is one that. Oh, and. Oh, look at this. I think this is from Nintendo Power. Got the Wave Race, and then on the other side, we've got the uh, Inventory of Areas. Um, unless it was part of this, but it doesn't look like it. So this might be the only thing I have left from the Ton of Power magazines. Uh, but anyways, it's a game guide for Super Mario Brothers for the 64, Nintendo 64. Game I had, beat it, didn't get all the stars though, so I can go to the roof. But uh, pretty close, and got rid of my Nintendo 64, got rid of it. So, yeah. So that's the first part, Legend of uh, Zelda, Donkey Kong 64, Mario, question is what do we have next? Well, so next up we have my three favorite strategy guides from this period of time that I'm covering in this first video. Uh, and we're going to go through them um, kind of fast because I think this is already over 20 minutes long this video. but. They're also my three favorites, so we'll see what I can do. Uh, first one is Earthbound. This is from the game, uh, boxed set when they first came out. Uh, trying to smell, this kind of reminded me of the stickers that uh, came in Nintendo Power that had like horrible smells with them. But um, I don't have the box anymore. Almost lost the game because my sister lent it to someone, uh, but thankfully held on to the game guide and got the game back with my amazing save with almost everything, if not everything. Uh, people have already talked about this too much, so I'm not going to cover it, but basically definitely love this, not getting rid of it, ever. Next up we have a guide. Uh, for a game that I was actually able to play three players with. Uh, it's one of the few games on the Super Nintendo that I did play uh, with the three player extension. And that is the Secret of Mana Guide. This was released by uh, basically a kind of publishing, I guess. Yep. Uh, all black and white. Which is a little unfortunate, but you know, for this period of time, it's basically what you're gonna get. You can see I've got a bunch of things in here. I'm not even quite sure what I got in here. Looks like I got some old map homework for one thing. Uh, but just keeping track of where I was for things. Uh, here, who knows how old this is? Oh. Oh, oh, whoa, uh, we'll get to that in a moment, but, uh, looks like I've basically got, uh, I was keeping track here of what each character had for levels for each of the weapons, so that is quite old, 
so who knows how old this is, but we have here a note to Nintendo Power. Dear Nintendo Power, I was hoping you, I was hoping that you can tell me what and how to get the Mana Sword and Doom Axe for Secret of Mana. I bought the game used. The Doom Axe says Top Axe and the Top Sword in the Weapon Info Box. The Doom Axe was 610 and Mana Sword 45 for orbs. Have upgrading the axe it changed to a sphere then Sprite Sphere. Perhaps the names will help. Boy equals K N Q S P L. Girl equals B D F H J. Sprite equals A C F J L. The mana seeds was two, the first and last ones. They also had three power suits, and I was wondering how to get those. The sprite knew Udine, but the girl does not. Other than that, they know no other spells. If you could tell me why this is like this, it would be much appreciated. Sincerely, James Skemp. P.S. Another one was Gygus Flail Orbs 3-3, the top whip, and they had the Dragon Lance with 2-2 two, two orbs. No idea what this means. <laughs> uh, and then over here we've got 60,000 suits, Tiger Cap times 3, Tiger Suit B.S., must mean boy sprite uh, and then bikini is girl so so yeah clearly I got the game the game used in some place um, and wasn't sure how to get certain weapons so that must have been before I got the guide or the person had cheated in some way or who knows uh, wow didn't even know about that uh, and then finally, for the last of my older game guides, I have the Super Metroid guide. And this was one that I was looking in earlier as well. Uh, this is really nice because it's got actual drawings, uh, as well as maps and screenshots from the game itself. Um, this was one that I definitely use as well to beat the game. It has at the very end the different endings that you can get. And I've actually cataloged that I did, I beat Super Metroid at some point in 2 hours 32 minutes with 59% of the stuff, 6 hours 45 minutes with 94%, 6 hours 44 minutes with 94%. 4 hours 45 minutes with 96%, 4 hours 19 minutes with 99%, and 3 hours 53 minutes in, with 100%. So, I guess I can say that I've never gotten the worst ending, which is 10 minutes or more. Uh, I know that I had rescued the guides many times before, and I have at least gotten the best ending once. Uh, this is a game that I almost lost as well, but ended up getting it back and still has my best save on it uh, so that I can just basically waltz in, beat the mother brain, and then get the, uh, the best ending. So there we go. Those are my older guides and a couple PC guides and a couple just other things. With that done, it's time to uh, move to the future and talk about PlayStation 1, PlayStation 2, PlayStation 3, Xbox 360, I think I've got an Xbox guide as well. We'll talk about those in the next video or videos. Thanks for watching.